looking through the newspapers of tomorrow with the broadcaster James Max and to the Observer and Ed Miliband. Absolutely. Well, we know you, that we, you, you like your climate change stories. I do like my climate change stories because it's so important. Ed Miliband <laughs> last night warned of the danger of the public backlash against the science of global warming in the face of continuing claims that scientists have manipulated data. And what he's beginning to say is... Don't listen to the siren voices over warning, warming. He's saying data errors shouldn't undermine the overwhelming picture. We must believe in it. Why? Because the danger of climate scepticism means that it will undermine public support, he says, including the likelihood, for example, of us all having to pay higher energy bills. And this is really what it comes down to. And I am fuming with this wretched man. First of all, he's preaching. I wish we could stop the preaching by politicians who know no more than any of the rest of us. All they're doing, I think, is a combination of they've latched onto something that they think, in the same way that in the 16th century, if you said, I don't believe in God or something like that, you'd be burnt at the stake. Now, if you question in any respect some form of climate change, then again, you, uh, you know, Gordon Brown will say, You're a flat earther or you're this. Well, where's your scientific degree, Gordon Brown? Where's your scientific degree, Ed Miliband? Because the thing is that we are not getting from the scientists advice which says this is definitely happening and these are the measures. And I'm afraid that with the things that are coming through, is the money that, for example, we're having to spend on extra uh, plane duties or extra fuel duty or anything else, is it actually going to combat climate change or is it merely a social engineering? We have killed off our car industry in this nation because suddenly people said, oh, you mustn't have these 4 by 4s you mustn't have these other things. And so we killed off a whole load of jobs and a whole raft of our society because there's no joined-up thinking on this. It, well, it's, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because, I mean... It... It depends how you view the science, I guess, whether you, you look at that sort of empirical data, which we know some of it has been wrong or taken from slightly strange sources that, that are now sort of can't justify those figures, or whether you do look, as, as Ed Miliband and others are yeah. saying, is that you need to not look at the empirical data sort of line by line, but just look at the general picture. I have no doubt that uh, the increase in human population is causing a problem on the Earth's surface. I think we all understand that, because if you go around our country and you see beautifully manicured fields, the fact that we grow things as crops changes the way that our environment is responding to us. But what I object to is that, first of all, we have no joined-up thinking. We do have an awful lot of waste that seems to be going on, and, and government policy isn't picking on the low-hanging fruit. We've got people telling us what to do on one hand and them doing another thing. Well, I t I t well let's move on to that, because move on to the Mail on Sunday. Oh, and the, the this man is a who's, great story. He's a climate change specialist, you know, the, the, the man sort of leading a lot of the, the voices on the IPCC, Dr Rajendra Pachauri, and he's the one who told us glaciers were going to melt, which is, I mean, that's now been rescinded. Well, it has, rather. And, and this is the other thing is, which I think, you know, a lot of people do uh, worry about these things, that when you are being told to do one thing, so, for example, when you're being told to switch off your lights or not use your car or, or change your lifestyle, and then the people who are telling you to do that are not leading by example, it makes you wonder whether or not we should be doing it at all and whether we should be listening to these wretched blooming people. Here he is, he's got his chauffeur-driven car that takes him, as you say, one mile or one kilometre to and from the office. It's not even a, a green car or a hybrid car, which, quite frankly, I don't think these cars are any good for the environment because they've got two engines and they've got the batteries and they've got all the plastic and everything else. And, you know, it's just ridiculous. I drive, by the way, an electric motor vehicle. So anybody who says to me, James, you don't understand, I've got a G-Wiz. It's the worst car I have ever owned. It's tax efficient, and I drive it to make a point, to say, we haven't invented the technology yet. It's imported from India. It's made of plastic. I'll probably die if it crashes. We need some proper joined-up thinking, and these people are not leading by example. I mean, I guess... You know, whatever your views on electric cars and climate change and all the rest of it, there, there is an argument, isn't there? I mean, as the paper is making, that you do need to lead by example. You know, You've got to, and also, our country is so small in terms of the emissions. Unless America and China and Russia do something, quite frankly, what we're doing is just taxing ourselves out of existence for the sake of making a point. Well, I wish they'd stop it. Um,